right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined from all the way across the pond, as the uh, Americans like to say it, by Clayton Anger, who is in, is in Bracknell in the UK. How are you doing, Clayton? I am really well. Hi, everybody. Nice to see you all. It's great to be here. Yeah, and Clayton is a multi-award winning author on mental health, psychology and spiritual development, number one bestseller of The Ego's Code, Understanding the Truth Behind Your Negativity. He's a speaker on mental health, neurodiversity and consciousness, also features on radio shows, podcasts in the UK, US and Australia. And, uh, you know, you, you, you have your own journey, you know, you... Um, you spent an uh, early age um, to the onset of depression and mental health challenges. So you're, so you're coming from a, a, a perspective of personal, real personal experiences and a long journey. And, and what we wanted to talk today about is mental health, the, the silent destroyer uh, in sales, all right? And, and let's face it, Clayton, sales is, is the one job pretty much where 90 say nine percent of your feedback is negative right it's no it's like not interested it's like whatever uh what how are you doing on your quota or you're not making quota. i mean there's a lot of pressure on salespeople, and they're often the only ones who have variable income at play right so that's an added pressure on the so um first of all um let's let's set the stage a bit just Give a little bit of background about you know your journey, and then let's jump into into sure. how text. Okay, so if I go back way back when, um, I used to be an accountant and tax consultant, interestingly specialising in mergers and acquisitions, um, and then I branched out on my own uh, because I didn't particularly like rules and being immersed in the largest rules based legislation in the world was quite was quite painful, and uh, I've been in personal development, uh, training and development, working with sales teams for about the last two decades. Dare I say that? Um, I've just uh, crossed uh, the, the half century threshold, stop celebrating birthdays now. Um, and I spent, you know, the majority of my time in the corporate world with business leaders, with business managers, but the majority of my time is with sales teams. Um, in different types of organizations, from the water sector through to fintech, through to other types of tech and telecoms. And I teach a lot about commercial acumen, um, strategic thinking, helping salespeople to really understand the realities of running a business. But what I've found um, over the last couple of years is more and more and more salespeople are, find themselves under even more personal pressure uh, to be able to deliver, and they don't all have the skills to be able to take care of themselves because they become very tunneled in their vision and, and focusing upon, you know, achieving that result uh, to be able to put food on the table or to be able to put their kids into school, to be able to take care of their families. And, um, and they experience a lot, a lot of pressure. And the conversations I'm having with sales leaders at the moment is that there's a lot of confidence issues that are showing up and that being able to trust themselves to be able to deliver and to be able to go into these into new markets to achieve mm -hmm. uh, different types of results so it's uh, i feel for them you know every day which is why some partners and i set up by uh, um we have a new new company called cast commercial acumen and one of the focuses on that is mental health support uh for for salespeople particularly yeah, and I think it's I think it's really important because you know we've seen all these sort of wellness um, initiatives in the past. I'm not knocking them. I mean, wellness initiatives are always a good thing, uh, but they've always focused on physical health, really, and mental health is always sort of pushed off to the side, somewhat. And you know, I'm a big believer, like mind body, you can't separate the two anyway. But uh, but yeah, I think says people living in a highly pressurized world, and and part of it is. I guess part of it is when the going gets tough is we tend to almost celebrate stress. Like the more stressed, the more under pressure people are. It makes us, you know, maybe as leaders or sales leaders, it makes us at least feel that something is happening, even though it may actually be quite destructive in the long run. I, I think that um, leaders, and I'm not saying all leaders, yeah. you know, some leaders 
leaders are very self-aware or aware of what's going on in their teams. But, you know, leaders can only be as good as um, the amount of trust and the psychological safety that they actually create for their teams. And, you know, are there salespeople willing to actually come up and share with them, you know, the pains and the pressures and the lacks of confidence uh, that they're actually experiencing? And if the psychological safety isn't there, then salespeople are not going to do it. And there's some really great research that's coming out of, um, it's called Sales Health Alliance, where they've sort of been looking at the willingness of salespeople actually to go up and, you know, share with their, with their leaders exactly how they're feeling. And I think that the research we were looking at earlier is that one in five salespeople are actually willing to do that. And this was supported by a Deloitte study that came out, uh, I think it's 2021, um, when they were looking at the impact that, that um, mental health is actually having upon business performance, you know, and whether we like it or not, salespeople are responsible for driving the success of a business, you know, and, you know, and it's becomes remiss of business leaders if they overlook it. And, um, and not, you know, all businesses, I'm not saying all, but majority of businesses now have a more awareness around mental health, but they don't always have the right types of resources in place to be able to support, um, you know, mental health. So for example, um, there's an organization who a friend of mine is a, is a leader within he's been in sales for many many years and we were talking with him about taking a program in uh into this, this particular organization and it was all around mindset mindfulness it was about really helping to bring um this balance between the mind the body and the spirit and um it got rejected by by hr because they said oh, we have uh, resources in house, and he'd actually said, "Well, I've used those resources, mm -hmm. and they're very tick the box approach. So there's resources in place within organisations, but they're not always as effective as we would like them to be. But again, it comes down to the individual and how much they are willing to trust the organisation, and whether there is a blame culture, what the stigma is like around mental health, and it's it's improving." Uh, but it's it's still not quite there. Mm -hmm. And 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 like you're saying at the beginning, I mean, the toughest role in many ways is is sales because, uh, as I said, you get a lot of rejection and all that, but you also have an intense amount of an, an intense amount of pressure. And the reality is that we're we're leaving these people out on their own, and there's a ripple effect of of as you, as you mentioned at the end. I mean, or even before we started, like the ripple effect of what it does to everybody around them. You know, yeah. not just in the core in corporate world, but in the community and everything. Because, but yet we, like you said, we don't do it. We don't do a lot to help these people, and they're pivotal. And and as you said. You know whether we like it or not. You know sales is uh, is critical to any organization, and we should like it because it's the tip of the spear. It's the people who are going out there to help people. But yet we've they've been bombarded with negative stereotypes throughout so throughout the, the you know the years. So they're almost starting off from a point of view of being apologetic about being a salesperson. Yeah, it's um, I. What I love about salespeople is that they are the ambassadors yeah. for the companies in which they, they represent. And all they want to do is to be of service. You know, they will often believe in their product or in their service that they're, you know, that they're offering and they want to help, you know, their customers to, to be better, to be more efficient, to be more effective, to drive profitability or, and help that company to go wherever it wants to go. Um, but the challenge for, for, I think, for the salesperson themselves is they don't recognize until it's too late exactly what's going on in their own body. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we, we talked about mind, body, spirit, but I, there is um, a premise in spirituality which talks about the spine. And the purpose of the spine is to move your life force or to move your breath. So when we go into stress, because we're under pressure constantly, we're trying to hit those targets. We're having this light competition or extreme banter in the sales team. And but the more pressure we're under, the more that that banter can become or appear to be toxic. And so the body goes into stress. So the mind goes into what's known as high beta brainwaves or high stress. 
And what it does is actually starts to cut off the oxygen that's moving up through the spine. And the way in which, you know, I, when I'm working with salespeople, the first thing to get them to notice is what notice what's going on in their head, what's going on with their self-talk. It's often very, very negative. And that's a trigger point for me. And it's the trigger point that their body and their mind is communicating to them that there is something that's not quite right or how they think it should be. But we've been conditioned through time to think that this is bad and wrong. And so we'll ignore it and we'll keep pressing and the levels of cortisol go beyond uh, the normal levels in the body. And so the brain goes into high beta brainwave. We, we start to panic, we breathe from the top of our chest or we don't breathe at all. And then we can't think clearly. And then that spirals then ultimately out of control. So the one thing that I always will say to salespeople is come back to your breathing. Notice what's going on in your mind. Realize that, you know, you've been, your body is communicating to you and that you've probably stopped breathing or your breathing has changed, which is affecting your mind. So just come back to the breath. If necessary, just put your hand on your heart and just say, you know, I'm okay. And then just take some breaths. I, I, I learned a new technique recently, which, which I think is brilliant, which is when you breathe in, take another quick breath as well. So you're taking two quick breaths very quickly, and it really helps to fast track the, the oxygenation within the body and in the mind. And then we're able to actually heighten our awareness because 90, 95% of our time, we, are, we spend our life unconscious. Mm. And so just by having this breath and awareness, it brings us back into the here and now. So we're able to, actually able to take care of ourselves in the moment. Yeah, you know, that's that's really fascinating, you know, I have to say, because uh, you know, we'll 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 give we'll give salespeople sales training, or we um, and probably a multitude of different types of sales training, and uh, and we'll be constantly on them. But we won't teach them things like what you just outlined. There is like how to de-stress yourself, and think about the impact that that would have on your meetings, your calls, whatever. That if you were if you had been taught how to calm yourself before they they happen i mean i i and and it seems like such a simple thing but you know simple doesn't always equate to easy but um but it seems like such a simple thing but it needs to be focused on you need to focus on the whole person and I, and i think that's just i think that what you just outlined there is is incredible incredibly pivotal but i guarantee you like very few people are doing that oh oh completely you know uh, but we don't recognize that we've actually gone unconscious and that's all that's happened is when we go into high levels of stress, we get triggered back to an event in our past and we start reliving the past in the here and the now. And so we've actually disconnected ourselves from what's actually going on in the moment. So the power of the breath and there's some great teachers out in the world that are teaching about the power of breathing and the importance of breathing. It actually brings you back back into the moment. But there's there's another step beyond that. And for me, when we go into stress, we can also go into high levels of resentment. Mm. And when we go into high levels of resentment, we're actually are saying to ourselves, I don't matter unconsciously or, you know, I don't matter to me. So a, a lot of the work, which I'm also doing with salespeople, is getting them to ask one question. And that question is, why am I doing this for me? And if they can answer that question, then actually it heightens their level of awareness. It brings their energy back. It supports their breath. And then they're actually able to go out and be really present in the meeting. If they can't answer that question or a word that comes up in their mind is, but, 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 you know, I want to be really successful in this meeting, but, or I really want to have a great conversation with this client and show them how our product or service can help them. But wherever that but comes up in their mind, they're unconsciously saying, I don't matter. Mm. And so just coming back to this point of why am I doing this for me or why am I doing this for my family or why am I doing this, you know, blah, 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 then it helps them to come back into the moment and to re be really present. And it really heightens performance as well in that way. Yeah, and you know what's interesting about that as well is, um, to be honest, sales in some ways is, is a unique role, but there's, 
if you did a survey, I guarantee you probably find about 80% of salespeople never intended to be a salesperson in the first place. It's like, you know, it's changing a little bit now where you're getting actually sales degrees and stuff happening in universities. But generally speaking, yeah, you, know, you get a load of people who go do marketing degrees and then come out of college and realize that there's a fraction of the marketing jobs as compared to sales. So they default into sales and maybe that's where they say, but imagine being in a, imagine your career path being something that you didn't choose and you're always feeling like you kind of fell into it and maybe you fail by being, by being it, even if you're really good. I, I, I understand that. You know, I, when I used to be an accountant, tax consultant, um, I thought I was doing tax or, you know, and actually I was a salesperson and I had to go out and sell tax services. You know, my, my wife is a nurse and part of her role is when you're engaging with, um, with the patients, um, she's in private practice. It's all about, you know, again, helping the patient first, but again, you're representing the organization. Mm -hmm. So again, it's, there is sales element that's that's ultimately associated with it. And I think if we can come back to this point of I just want to be of service and I want to help, then that ultimately will help the salesperson to take care of themselves first. And when they take care of themselves first, they're then able to take care of their customer. Mm -hmm. and then they're able to take care of their targets and the organization. But often the salespeople put them, salesperson puts themselves second, third, fourth, or even last. Um, which again puts the pressure on themselves, especially when you see you know all the drama and all the horror that's in the newspapers and on the news every day about cost of living and mm. it's you know, the continuous pressure that they're under to deliver. It's mm. you know it's horrific. Mm. Yeah, no, because I would say, I mean, that's why I, I think uh, one of the things that people need to be careful about is the inputs they started their day with, because you just mentioned the news there, right? I mean, d regardless of where you sit on the political spectrum, the news that you watch, is it's it's designed to evoke a reaction. It's not really designed to inform anymore. Um, same with, you know, social media, you can get into comparison, culture, all of this other stuff. So I think I think a good starting point is always to look at what what inputs are you are you in, into your head before you start a day even. Uh, absolutely, you know, in an ideal world, I will start my day uh, with a short run. I do a two or three kilometer run each morning, but I'm listening to as I'm running. I'm listening to you know authors who I enjoy listening to, who get me excited, get me thinking about about my business. So a book I'm listening to at the moment is 10X by, by Grant Cardone. It's a really interesting book around, around sales for me within my business, but also how I can help other people to start to think about their approaches and how they are taking care of themselves, mm -hmm. um, especially around things like different types of action. So I realized for myself that my own mental health was getting triggered when I was looking at the types of action that I was taking, and this came up in one of my morning runs, you know, I realized that there's four different types of action. The first type of action is retreat. Um, the second type of action was no action at all. Uh, the third type of action was just average, the type of action which we take, you know, normally every day. Or the fourth type of action was massive action. And I realized that certain situations um, within my life that I was retreating or I was taking no action, you know, like procrastinating, avoiding. Mm -hmm. And those were triggers, information that I was communicating to myself through my behavior as something wasn't quite right. And it enabled me to spend a little bit of time thinking about, okay, why am I retreating with this? Why am I avoiding, you know, doing X, Y, and Z? Um, and so it enabled me then to actually start to explore what was going on for myself within that. So again, this is helpful for salespeople because especially at the moment when they're under pressure and they've got to go out and they've got to, you know, create new business, notice, you know, am I retreating? Am I avoiding it? If so, what's the story that's going on in my head? Come back to your breathing, oxygenate the body and then say, okay, so what action can I take? What's the first thing? What's the one first thing that I can do? That's the right thing to move forward on this. Too far, we, we think into the future. I've got to make the sale. I've got to make the sale. But what's the first step, then the second step, and then the third step? And then all of a sudden, things start to, to move, uh, and, and it can be momentous for people. You know, no, no, and, and 100%. But I, I love what you're just saying about really starting to pay attention 
to yourself. Um, and again, this is not something that's particularly encouraged, you know. And and the other part of it is, is I think, um, you know, as leaders and such as sales leaders, we need to get away from the addiction to stress and chaos and all of that, because for some reason we've decided that that makes, as I said earlier, that that makes us feel like something's happening. Yeah, you know, and, and again, I am always curious about my own fear. Mm -hmm. So my wife and I, we've just come back from our honeymoon in Mexico. Oh, congratulations. Uh, thank you very much. And then in the, se in the second week of our honeymoon, we, we went, we did our paddy open water diving. And it was horrific for me, you know. Um, she <laughs> was like loving me. it. She yeah, the water, I'm there with playing you. Fish. <laughs> but I found myself in a lot of fear and a lot of stress worrying about breathing at the water you know one thing you shouldn't do is hold your breath i found myself doing this and then i just came back to okay noticing what's going on for myself and saying okay i need to take care of myself right now and a lot of sales people don't take care of themselves mm -hmm. they step out you know i i do before i go into a big sales meeting i even did it before we came on to our call um, I, I have like a pre-performance ritual, it's called, from a speaking perspective. And I call it the wind technique. And all I, and I learned this from some, some great speakers over the years. And I just walk in a, in a figure eight. And as I'm walking in a figure eight, the reason I'm walking in a figure eight is it connects both hemispheres of the brain. Mm. And when you're walking in the figure eight, I'm breathing in. I'm really focusing upon my breath. And I'm setting my intention. And so I use this for sales meetings, for podcast calls. If I'm going to do some work on my book, um, I will work, walk. I'll be setting my intention. I'll be breathing because it brings me into the moment. So the W is the walk. The I is breathing with intention. Um, and the N is then, okay, what's the next steps? Mm. Um, and it's just, again, that really helps me before I go into client meetings. I'm setting myself up as best I can to have a, have a successful call or a successful meeting or um, a successful whatever that is I'm doing. Yeah, no, I love it. I mean, that's great. I, I love those um, little rituals and so and so simple. But it, what it means is taking a couple of moments out to focus on yourself. And, and that's if there was one thing I think that people need to pay attention to is we're so distracted nowadays that we never spend a, a, even a couple of moments with ourselves. And I think that's that's the antidote to a lot of this. Well, listen, um, Clayton, this has been fantastic. All of Clayton's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and your business. Okay, thank you. So uh, I run a corporate training company that focuses primarily uh, within, um, within the sales arena, uh, B2B. So small, medium, large, major corporate, public sector sales. Um, we're teaching salespeople how to all around commercial acumen. So understanding the language of business, the realities of running a business, um, we really help them to have really credible, trustworthy conversations and how to present in a way that sort of communicates the value of your proposition that helps your customers to be, to be successful. And what wraps around all of that is, is personal well-being and, and mental health. Everything that we do is driven from the Mental Health Foundation and personal well-being. And you can check us out at cast, uh, www.castcommercialacumen.co.uk. Yeah, fantastic. And I would encourage people to go check it out. I, I've said for a long time that, uh, you know, the this, this successful salesperson of the present and future needs to have high levels of business acumen, have curiosity about business, be interested in the business of business. Uh, and uh, not just, the, you know, not just your own business, but the business of business and of the businesses that you that you sell into. So great stuff, Clayton. Again, thank you very much for today. Thank you for watching and listening. Thank you, Tom. See you all again soon. Take care, everybody. Thanks very much. Thanks for having me.